Hey guys, Matt here with Finnick TG. Hey, there's two ways to install VMware tools on a Linux client. Um, you can install it from the package repository, which is the new and recommended way to do it, or you can install it manually. This video is going to go over how to install it from the package repository, and I'll be using Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux for the for the lab, but it should work the same way in Fedora or CentOS. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get into your vSphere client, whether you, you're using the old um, uh, C client or this is the HTML5 client or the Flash client, whatever you're using, go ahead and get into it. It should work the same way on Workstation as well, if you're using Workstation. So open your VM, and in order to install it from the package repository, you're going to have to have internet access. So log in, and then I'm just going to test that we have internet access. So I'll just go ahead and I'll ping Google. And we definitely have internet access. So before you install a package, it's always recommended that you run um, the updates on the repository. So the first command you want to run is yum update and I'm not logged in as root so you'll have to either log in as root or run it as sudo. So I'll just run it as sudo. So it's sudo yum update and if it's a new VM, this will probably take a while. Um, I've already ran the update, so it should run through pretty fast for the video. All right, so after it finishes up, you're going to want to run another command uh, to install VMware tools. So sudo yum install and then open dash VM dash tools. And this is the VMware tools package. So that, that's really all there is for the install. So once it's installed, um, vSphere still won't recognize it. So if you go back to your vSphere client, you'll see that it says it's still not running, not running non-installed. In order for it to register, you're gonna to have to restart it. So you can just run the command sudo shutdown. And then I'll go ahead and execute that now. So it'll go ahead and restart. Okay, so once it's back up, if you go back to your vSphere client, you should see that it's executing the scripts. And then if we give it a second, it'll switch over to it's it's now running um, the, the current version. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, thanks, guys. I'm going to post another video on how to do this manually if for whatever reason you can't get Internet access on the VM. So if you found this helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe. So thanks, guys.